Hi guys, this is Vineet and in today's video, we will discuss about integration services ETL project tutorial part 5. This will be a practical video. So this is the part 5 of this video. So if you have not uh, previously watched uh, the previous four parts of this video, I would uh, request all of you guys to please go ahead and uh, start watching videos uh, starting part 1 till part 4 before you can proceed with this uh, part 5 of this video otherwise if you directly watch this part uh, this won't be of any use to you because uh, these videos uh, need to be uh, watched in sequence so that's why it's uh, essential to uh, go through in sequence starting from part 1 till part 5 which is this part let's move ahead uh, there are some points to remember while watching this video Please watch this video till the end to gain better clarity of the concept and if it's possible for you, please watch this video twice to gain better clarity of the concept. Perform any exercises in your lab and test environments only. Do not touch any production environment or production databases. We would like to know your thoughts regarding our videos, so please share your comments as well. So we love to read your comments and eagerly wait for them. So please do share your comments, suggestions any stories uh, related to sql server in your day-to-day -day life any situations where my videos have helped you uh, you may share any of those thoughts i've also curated some of the playlists for you to watch uh, all of these playlists are available in the video uh, description area uh, the links are given in the video description area as well as uh, these playlists are also available on my channel page for which the link is also given in the video description area so some of these playlists are database design playlist sql server table playlist business continuity playlist indexing playlist performance training playlist and integration services playlist this video is a part of uh, integration services playlist so in order to better learn uh, about any topic uh, the best way is to go through each video in the playlist instead of watching uh, videos randomly there are currently uh, around 170 videos posted on my channel so please watch them uh, they are very useful videos and uh, the number of videos are growing at constant pace uh, on a day-to-day -day basis so i would request you all of you guys to please subscribe to my channel so that you can get timely notifications there's a subscribe button below this video so if you are new to this channel uh, or if you have not already subscribed to this channel but watching my videos I would request you guys to please go ahead and uh, click on the subscribe button below this video once you click on the subscribe button you will get a bell icon click on that bell icon select all notifications to get notifications regarding all my future videos so i hope you have subscribed by now so let's move ahead let's come back to a topic which is uh, we are we were building the integration services ctl project so we will continue uh, over here so let me take you to notes quickly all right so let me take you to notes quickly all right so in this video series uh, we need to understand how you can add looping in the ssis uh, in the existing project we have touched upon it little bit in our previous video so please watch that out and also please watch all the four parts before uh, starting off with this video now uh, in this video we will cover the looping part so there are four steps involved in that so earlier we had discussed that you need to copy the package that was created earlier so the earlier package name was lesson one dot dtsx if you don't remember the lesson one dot dtsx was the package name and the second step is to add and configure the for each loop container so we will use the for each loop container we'll add that container in this uh, project and configure it and we will modify the flat file connection manager as well in this package and finally we will test the package so let's start off with step one so which is uh, you will copy the lesson one package so let's quickly open up visual studio so if you type visual studio over here so visual studio 
So we were working with this uh, SSIS tutorial uh, solution where we had uh, built uh, one of the packages. I will show you in the solution explorer what's the package name. So, so the solution name is SSIS solution but the package name which we had created earlier was uh, lesson1.dtsx so once this uh, Visual Studio loads up, I will show you that. So waiting for it to load. So what we will do in this task is we will create a copy of this uh, Lesson 1 DDSX package uh, that was built earlier. And if you have not completed the, uh, if you have, haven't already created the Lesson 1 DDSX package, I would highly recommend please uh, start from part one of this video and start building the project until you, uh, until then uh, you cannot start with this video. So we had already built the package earlier. So I will show you shortly once the solution loads inside Visual Studio. So right now it's preparing the solution. Let's see how long it takes. So let me pause this video until uh, the solution gets loaded in uh, Visual Studio. Uh, I think it's taking time a little bit. It's better to pause. So guys, uh, finally the solution is loaded and uh, we were talking about this package. Uh, the solution name is SSIS tutorial written over here. But if you talk about the package under the SSIS package category, over here in the solution expert, you will see the package name was lesson1.ddsx. So what we will do here uh, in this video, we will create a copy of this package, um, which is lesson1.ddsx. And we will use the copy uh, throughout this video. Now let's create a lesson2 package, which will be a copy of uh, this lesson1.ddsx. So let me show you the procedure to copy it. All right, so once you are inside the SQL Server Data Tools environment, uh, it is already opened. And the solution is also opened over here. We have already opened the SSIS solution or SSIS tutorial solution. So this is also already open. Yeah. The solution name was SSIS tutorial, so it is opened. And the solution file name is .sln, which we opened. And inside that we have lesson1.ddsx uh, we need to right click on that file there's a copy options to copy the package so let's click on copy and in the solution explorer window itself uh, right click the ssis packages so right click on this category and there's an option to paste to paste the copied as lesson1.ddsx package so once we copy uh, you see one is appended to that lesson one. So this is the copied package. All right. So once you copy the package, uh, please name it to lesson2.dtsx. So how to rename? Right click on it and there's a rename option. So use your keyboard to rename this. So mark it as lesson2.dtsx. All right. So this package is renamed. It's a copy of the lesson one package. And whatever modifications we will do, we will do in the lesson 2.dtsx package. So here you will see, here we have two tabs. One is for lesson 1 DTSX and one is for lesson 2 DTSX. So let's close the lesson 1 DTSX tab. So we are no longer working with lesson 1. So let's take lesson 2.dtsx. Now uh, the package is already open. If it isn't open just double click on the package in the under the SSIS packages section in the solution expert it will open up the package over here so right now it is opened now what we'll do we will right click anywhere in the background of the control flow we are on the control flow tab indicated by this tab so right click anywhere on the control flow design surface and uh, select the properties option and it will open up a properties window on the right hand side and 
change the name property to lesson 2 which we have already done uh, by right clicking on that SSIS package and uh, renamed it to lesson 2 so it's already renamed to lesson 2 otherwise you can uh, rename it from here as well uh, so we are not going to do this so earlier we had discussed whenever you copy a package uh, it also copies the uh, id property so if we take a look at the id property here it start with 46c ending in 60 similarly if we take a look at lesson 1.ddsx if i open this package and if we take a look at properties of this here the id is different so id in our case is different so we are fine here sometimes when you copy the package um, it uses the same id but in our case i would say if i go to properties yeah id is different uh, for lesson one and lesson two ddsx so so there's no need to worry let's close lesson one dot ddsx and if you want you can generate a new id as well uh, but yeah it should be fine but yeah in, in case you want to generate a new id just click on generate new id so it has generated a new id which is fine for us so all right so so far we have copied uh, one of the already existing packages lesson one dot dtsx to lesson two dot dtsx so this lesson two dot dtsx is already added to the solution explorer there is another way to copy as well but yeah we are we are fine so far the other way is to if you want to add an existing package you can right click on the ssis package and there is an option to add an existing package so if your uh, package is outside of the solution you can uh, import any existing packages uh, from here as well but uh, right now i don't think so uh, there is a need So, add existing package. It basically lets you add the copy of the existing package. And uh, in the package location, we select file system. And then we click on the package path button, three ellipses, and locate the package file, which are DTSX files. If you want to load any package. So right now if we see the lesson 1 DTSX is also opened in uh, opened over here as well. So both the lesson 2 and lesson 1 uh, DTSX are uh, copied here. So there is no need to add the package. So this one is already added. So the copying step is done guys. Uh, I hope you got the idea how to copy the package. Now let's go through the step two uh, mentioned here. So step one is done where we have copied the uh, SSIS package created earlier. Now step two will be to add and configure the for each loop container. So let's go through it. Now, in this particular task, uh, adding the for for each loop container, we add the ability to loop through a folder of flat files and apply lessons one data flow transformations to each of those uh, flat files. All right, so instead of just one file which we had used in the lesson one DTSX package. What we will do here is we will use the loop facility uh, to browse through or loop through a folder of flat files and we will apply the transformation the lookup transformations that we or the data flow transformations that we used uh, in each of these files and we do this by adding and configuring up for each loop container to the control flow the for each loop container that you add uh, must be able to connect to each flat file in the folder because all the files in the folder have the same format the for each loop 
container can use the same flat flag connection manager because the format of the files is same the for each loop container can use the same flat file connection manager to connect to each of these files and the flat file connection manager that the container uses is the one we used in lesson one so if you take a look here uh, we have a flat file connection manager uh, mentioned here this is simple flat file source data this is the uh, connection manager that was created earlier in uh, lesson one now the currently uh, currently the flat file connection manager from uh, lesson one connects to only one specific flat file so if we talk about this uh, this connection manager it connects only to one specific flat file and to iteratively connect to each of the flat file in the folder uh, we have to configure both the for each loop container and the flat file uh, connection manager as follows so for each loop container we map the enumerated value of the container to a user defined package variable so we will show you shortly how to do that the container then uses this variable to dynamically modify the connection sync property of a flat connection manager so if we take a look here this if we double click on it or maybe if we uh, edit it it will open the edit dialog box for this uh, connection manager so each uh, this connection has a connection string to the flat file uh, it creates the connection string all right and basically uh, the container uses the variable to dynamically modify the connection string property so do we have such property over here uh, just check it out so this is the connection string which is the part to the file this is the connection string it is uh, currently pointing to sample currency data.txt file all right and basically the role of the enumerated uh, value uh, which is defined through a package variable uh, we will dynamically modify the connection string property of the flat file connection manager and iteratively connect to each file in the folder so let's see how to do that and the second thing is a uh, flat file connection manager so earlier we were talking about the for each loop container what we'll do with that and with the flat file connection manager we modify the connection manager that was created so we will modify this uh, connection manager uh, it was created previously in lesson one um, by using the user defined variable to populate the connection manager connection string property so we will modify this uh, connection string property of this uh, object all right so we will uh, modify this uh, there's a connection string property so we will modify it here as well to use the parameters instead of uh, some static uh, file to the uh, pointer to the path or pointer to a file path we will use some uh, parameters here all right now procedures in this task uh, show you how to create and modify the for each loop container uh, to use a user defined package variable and to add a data flow task into the loop and we will learn how to modify the flat file connection manager to use that user defined variable in the next task now after we made these modifications to a package and uh, when the package is run the for each loop container iterates through all the files in the sample data folder each time a file is found that matches the criteria and the for each loop container populates the new variable with the file name and maps the variable to the connection string uh, property of the sample currency data flat file connection manager and then runs the data flow against that file in this way each iteration of the for each uh, loop the data flow task consumes a different flat file so let me show you how to do that and because the microsoft integration services separates control flow from the data flow so we have separate tabs for control flow and data flow here so data flow tab is currently loading 
So because uh, these tabs are separate, the control flow tab is separate and the data flow tab is separate. Any looping that you add to the control flow won't require modification to the data flow. All right. Therefore, uh, the lesson one data flow uh, does not have to be changed. So we will not make any changes to the data flow here, but we will yeah, make the changes to the control flow here. Now, what we will do, we will add a for each loop container. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, you can start this practical from here now. Now in the SQL Server data tools, uh, we are on the control flow tab. If it's, uh, you are not there, please click on it to uh, go on the control tab, control flow tab. Now in the SSIS toolbox, uh, there's a section for containers. Please expand that if it is not already expanded. From the containers section, uh, you can drag the for each loop container, so which is the second option, onto the design surface of control flow tab. So we have dragged this, right? And we can right click on it and there's an edit option to edit the for each loop container. And it will basically open up the for each loop editor dialog box. And on the general page of it, uh, for the name option, enter the name for each file in folder. So let me type that name for each of uh, one second guys let me properly name it for each uh, file in folder i'm renaming it and let's click on okay to uh, rename it so it is showing that name over here for each file in folder and we have clicked on okay now uh, right click the for each loop container and select properties so right click on it and select properties it will show the properties box on the right hand side and in the properties window we need to verify the local id once again so it should be set to united states so what is the local id over here do you see local id id is there so local id is set to english united states which is fine for us so just need to verify that now what we will do we will configure the enumerator for the for each loop container so let me show you how to configure the enumerator for each loop container now double click the for each loop container we will open the editor for uh, for each loop co container now there is a collection option on the left hand side apart from general click on collection and on the collection page select now we are inside the collection page and what we need to do we need to select for each file enumerator so there are multiple types of enumerators so which one we uh, we would like to select because we are uh, looping through the files so what we will do we will select the for each file enumerator because we are enumerating through files so let's select this one now after you select this in the enumerator configuration group so this is the section enumerator configuration uh, we need to click on the browse button and once the browse dialog box opens uh, we need to locate the folder on the machine that contains the currency files that are included with the sample data so let me see where are those files stored so i don't know need to check Maybe data warehousing i don't know let's check it externally so um, basically we can check the path for that uh, flat file connection manager uh, right now we have not modified it so the path is here so i can copy it as well so do a control a control c and you can open it up here in the so if you can open up this path which is the path for sample data where your sample currency data files there are multiple files for currency so we need to select this path so let's copy it out and uh, double click on the for each loop container and once again we will configure the settings so go to the collection instead of item enumerator please select uh, the file enumerator and uh, click on the browse button and let's see what the path is program files microsoft sql server so 
C program files Microsoft SQL Server and under that we have hundred so it is already under which folder uh, it's in the sample data so select the sample data folder click OK and in files box we need to specify the filter so file names are starting with currency if you can check the file names uh, the currency files are starting with the name currency so we will find the filter like this so currency uh, we can say underscore star dot txt file so currency files have underscore after that and we can put star and dot txt to include all the currency files in the filter now once you do this uh, i think we are done and uh, we can click on okay but before that we let's do some uh, mapping of uh, variables so we have defined the collection where we have uh, selected for each file the numerator and given the path for the sample currency files which we had downloaded from uh, the internet uh, microsoft website if you uh, don't know how to do that please go through video one it will show you how to download the currency files or the sample data for this project now go to the variable mapping section uh, here basically we will map the enumerator to the user defined variable so after selecting variable mappings uh, on the variable mappings page uh, which is on the right hand side in the variable column so we have two columns variable and index in the variable column select the empty style and uh, select new variable over here and in the add variable it opens up once you select the new variable it will open up a add variable dialog box and in the add variable dialog box uh, for the name section uh, name the variable as uh, variable for file name so let's keep it as variable file name and uh, variable please keep in mind that uh, these uh, variable names are case sensitive so understand that in mind these are case sensitive variables now once you select a variable name click on ok all right so this is a user defined variable pair file name all right this is a variable now let's click on ok and we have exited uh, the for each loop editor dialog box so we have defined one of the enumerator variables just now where file name now we have added the for loop uh, for each loop container now what we will do we will add the data flow task to the loop so above that we have this data flow task so we will add this task to this particular loop so that it can run all the steps mentioned over here so this task extract sample currency data refers to this uh, data flow all right and we need to add this task to here for each file in folder container now what we can do we can simply drag it and put it inside the loop container like this so now it's inside the loop container right so this task will run in loop and this is done for each for each file in the folder all right now next step will be to so second step is done over here we have added and configured the for each loop container now we will go through step three where we will modify the flat file connection manager so let's go through those steps so how to modify the flat file connection manager in this task we will modify the flat file connection manager uh, that we have copied from uh, lesson one dtsx file and the flat file connection manager if we talk about uh, the flat file connection manager is configured to statically load a single file so if we take a look at properties of this file here uh, for this connection manager flat file connection manager it is pointing to a single file if you can determine through this path it is just pointing to this uh, single file right now to enable this uh, flat file connection manager to iteratively load uh, all the files uh, one by one you can change the connection string property of the connection manager to use the user defined variable which we had created where file name we can uh, configure this uh, flat file uh, connection manager to use that variable instead which contains the path of the file to be loaded at runtime uh, by modifying the connection managers to use the value of the user defined variable to change the connection string property 
the connection manager connects to different uh, flat files at runtime at runtime each iteration of for each loop container updates the variable name uh, where file name and updating the variable in turn causes the connection manager to connect to a different flat file each time and the data flow task to process a different set of data now configure the flat file connection manager to use a variable let's go through the practical so now what we'll do we will configure the flat file connection manager to use a variable so in the connections manager section which is at the bottom window right click the sample flat file source data and uh, select the properties option it will open up the properties window on the right hand side and the properties window make sure that package path starts with the backslash uh, package dot connection so let's confirm that so let's take a look at package path so this is the package path section so it should start with slash package dot connections but i think it is uh, referring to project connections So if it is not pointing to, uh, if it is not starting with package dot connections, so right now it's starting with projects dot connections. So it is not pointing to package dot connections. So what we need to do in the connections manager pane. So let's go to the connections manager pane. Okay. So in the connections manager pane, what do we need to do? Right click the sample flat file source data. So we need to right click on it. And instead of uh, it being a project connection, let's convert it to a package connection. So there's an option convert to package uh, connection. So this connection will be only available to this package. So let's convert it to a package connection. So it gives us a warning when you convert a project connection to a package connection. Package that use the connection might not run. Do you want to convert the project connection? So if a project connection is changed to a package connection, the only uh, then only that particular package can use that connection, not any other packages. So let's click on OK. So we have converted it to a package connection. Now in the properties window, uh, so if I take a look at properties now, you will see now it is changed to package dot connections instead of project dot connections. Okay, and uh, this is what we wanted. And uh, in the properties window for expressions, so do you see expressions section over here? So here we have expression section. We need to select the empty style and then select the ellipsis button. So where we will define the uh, expression. So how to do that? Now in the property expression editor dialog box, which is this one. In the property column. So this is the property column. We need to select the connection string. So let's select connection string. Right. And after you select a connection string uh, in the expression column, just press the ellipsis button to open the expression builder dialog box and in the expression builder dialog box we need to expand the variable nodes so variables and parameter we can expand on this and once you expand that uh, you will see a variable which is a user defined variable over here so variable nodes is uh, already these are system variables but yeah we, we are referring to this user defined variable which is uh, currently visible now we need to drag this variable user var file name into the expression box. So let's drag it over here. So the way to use this to use the ampersand sign and uh, we keep the name of the variable along with the user system within the square back brackets. Otherwise we can just drag it will write the code for you. All right. Once you do this, you need to click on OK and uh, OK again to close the property expression. Uh, Editor dialog box. All right, so this uh, flat file connection manager, uh, which is a package uh, connection manager now, 
it is using an expression to use the variable which we had created previously now let's go to next task which is step 4 now this is done guys uh, this will now use the expression uh, variable to define the connection string all right and uh, we can double click uh, on it to check all right so all right uh, that is fine So we have defined the expression um, where we have we are changing the connection string property to the variable name here. Uh, connection string is also specified over here. I don't know that will take uh, whether it will take any part or not, or whether it will be totally variable based. I think it will be variable based as we are using variable. Now uh, let's test the package uh, that we have created. Uh, but before that, let's save all and. What is the next step is to test the package let's test it now with the for each loop container and the flat file connection manager and now configured uh, the with the lesson 2 package can iterate through 14 flat files uh, which are these files so these are total of uh, 14 files right total of i can say 15 files these are not even 14 these are 15 files one of them uh, was already loaded uh, so let's uh, minimize it for now so this loop will iterate through these 15 files in the sample data folder and each time a file name matches uh, the specified uh, criteria the for each loop uh, container populates the user defined variable with the file name so this container will populate the user defined variable with the file name as it iterates through the file in the sample data folder which is uh, this one now the variable in turn updates the connection string property of this uh, flat file connection manager which connects to the flat file the for each loop container then runs the unmodified uh, data flow task which is on this page we have not made any modifications here and uh, this will run the this data flow task against all the files uh, present in this folder and loads all the data from this file and imaging data from these files into the table which were uh, we were using earlier uh, what was the table name i almost forgot but yeah it should be there in the notes uh, what was the table name uh, maybe let's see i don't remember but yeah we will check on that <laughs> later we had created a table that we were checking so let's go back to visual studio we'll check now the variable in turn updates the connection string property of the flat file connection manager which connects to the flat file the for each loop container then runs the unmodified data flow task against the data in that flat file all right so for each of the file it will run this data flow tasks now if you ran the package from lesson one um, i think we had run it previously we need to delete the records from the dbu so the name of the table was new fact currency rate if you remember so let's uh, delete the data from that table because this task will again uh, load all the 15 files and if we don't delete the data there will be duplicacy of data in the table let's uh, delete the data out from there so launch the sql server we will remove the data shortly waiting for it to launch Now this is launched. Let's, let's connect to a default instance and expand on the databases section. And the database we have to use is the AdventureWorks DW2022 database. 
trigger a new query against it and let's do select star from new fact currency rate so this is a table name let's see if there is any data in this so we have around 1097 rows that were <laughs> inserted earlier when we created the lesson1.dtsx package now let me remove the rows so what you can do you can simply type delete from uh, the table name which is new fact currency rate so this statement will delete uh, all the rows from this uh, table so all the rows are deleted if you do a select now it will show you empty table so nothing is there in the table right now let's go to visual studio now uh, let's check the we have already checked the package layout so we are fine now what we'll do we will uh, test the lesson to dtsx uh, tutorial package this is uh, what is open right here and in order to do that in this sort of solution explorer you need to right click on the lesson 2.dtsx package so right click on it and there is an execute package option you can run it run the package from there as well so the package runs immediately as soon as you run you can verify the status of for each loop uh, in the output window so right now it's executing so it is executing multiple times if you see all right and in the output window which is not showing up here right now so it is doing it for each file you can see so now it has done for all the 15 files i don't know where is the output window so this one is the output window where you can see it is iterating through uh, files and it has uh, finished the execution so all the steps are uh, performed fine data flow steps have also run and finally if we see that uh, 1097 rows are inserted so the package runs and we have verified the status in the output window and uh, now we can see that 1097 rows were added to the destination table uh, if we check the table, um, we'll see 197 rows. Uh, now, there's a difference. There are too many rows, right? But if we take a look here, it is showing us 1097 rows uh, added to the registration table from the currency VW file. So, which file the rows are added from? So, output tab is not indicating anything from which files the rows were added so there's a progress tab as well so if you select the progress tab so it shows us the progress of task right so you can see the progress over here is it showing us the file name so yeah here it is uh, showing us each of the currency file names it is uh, loading uh, data from so once the pre-execution task completed this is the first it loaded from currency ers.txt and if we go towards the end it has loaded the data from currency dot underscore vb dot text so it has loaded data from multiple files right so apart from currency vb we, we can see currency usd was also loaded so last file loaded was currency vb dot text so it has loaded data from each of the file right the last one file loaded is currency vb.txt and the rows in total from that those 15 files are around uh, 13,532 rows so we can check the progress of the package in the progress tab so that one is very useful provide the useful information which all files were loading now once the package has completed running and on the debug menu what we can do we can stop the debug of the package 
so guys we are done with adding looping to the project which we have done in lesson 2.dtsx so we are done with step 4 as well now let's see how much we have recorded and let's see the timing so we have recorded like uh, 45 minutes of video now uh, let's discuss little bit on uh, what we will do in our next video right so in our next video what we will do we will create another project which will be lesson 3 maybe we will create another project or maybe we will modify the existing one uh, we will copy out the project created in lesson 2 to continue with the lesson 3 okay so lesson 3 will be what we will do we will add logging with the SSIS that will be lesson 3 and let's discuss little bit about it so Microsoft integration services include the logging features as well that lets you troubleshoot so integration services services includes the logging features so these logging features can help us troubleshoot and monitor package execution by providing a trace of task and container events so logging basically monitors the package execution by providing a trace of task and container events now the logging features are basically flexible uh, so we can say logging is flexible or logging features are flexible you um, in the terms that uh, you can enable logging at the package level so logging can be enabled at package level right and it can be it can be enabled at task level as well individual task level we can enable it or can be enabled at uh, container level within the package so logging is quite flexible in integration services and we can select which events we want to log and create multiple log against a single package so we can also select which uh, all events uh, we want to log right and we can also create multiple logs against a single package so this is, these are some of the features of logging and uh, basically log providers are there which can create the log files so let me specify it a little bit so log providers create the logs and each log provider can write logging information to different formats and destination types let me mention that so each log provider can write logging information to different formats and destination types now integration services provide the following type of log providers so let's discuss on the types of uh, log providers in integration services so what are these log providers so first log provider is uh, the text file log provider sql server profiler and windows event log these are some of the log providers sql server xml file these are the five log providers uh, which integration services use it and provides now in this tutorial what we will do we will create a copy of the package uh, that we created in the uh, 
um, lesson two. Uh, so the, we will use this one lesson two dot dtsx. It is already saved. So we will create a copy of it, and we will work with this new copy. Uh, then we will uh, in the new copy we will configure the login to monitor uh, specific events during package execution and uh, if you had haven't completed uh, this far i would uh, request you to please go ahead starting from uh, st uh, part one of this video up till here you should be completed if you want to continue with the lesson 3.dtsx uh, uh, package for this video we are done till here uh, i've uh, discussed a little bit about uh, what we will do we will add logging we have talked about what all log providers are there in uh, integration services so working with this new package uh, we will add the logging to monitor specific events during package execution and we need to be sure that uh, package 2 is completed you are completed till here till now if you want to continue with the next video so please uh, subscribe guys i don't know what you are waiting for please go ahead and immediately subscribe so that you can get notification regarding my next video on <coughs> integration services sorry and that will be part 6 uh, this one is part 5 of this video so in my next video i will show you how you can add login so in order to add logging there will be uh, three steps that we will cover so in step one we will copy the lesson two package that we had already created and th in the step two what we will do we will add and configure the login configure the login and in the step three what we will do we will test the lesson three package that we will create all right so guys uh i hope you like this video if you really like this video please click on the like button also please uh, share your comments with us and i uh, thank you so much for your time on this video and uh, guys if you have uh, a good network of friends i would need your help in circulating my video if you feel uh, my videos are useful for your friends um, that are working in sql server domain please do circulate them but there's a share button below this video you can share any of the video by using the share button on youtube and share this video with your friends and also please ask your friends guys to please subscribe to my channel uh, i need some su uh, subscriber at this moment and i really want to expand this uh, channel and help uh, people working in sql server domain so please help me in circulating my videos and circulating my channel so that i can have more and more subscribers so that I'm, i can create useful videos for you in the next chapter or uh, in the next video i will uh, show you how you can add logging to a package all right so we are done till here thank you so much for your time once again guys and you have a wonderful day ahead thanks